thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, first question I want to ask is, when did you know music was going to be a part of your life? Oh, I think right away. Uh, maybe not my job per se, but my father played guitar and he was always playing guitar and he encouraged me to just like play it. So um, it was always a thing that I was interested in and a thing I liked. Um, it took me a while to like figure out how much I liked it, I guess, and what that meant. Um, it's because I would just like kind of like for a while, I just like played the guitar in my room and I would just play like the 10 songs I knew because um, I, I, I never I, I wasn't a I played guitar before I really started liking music like I would just play stuff, you know, and then like once I like actually had stuff to play, I got really into it again. But then I wasn't playing with anyone. I was just kind of just still playing with myself or like I go to my friend's house and like we'd show each other something, but we wouldn't like play together. <laughs> we would just like, like, this is how this Green Day song goes. And they would go, this is how this Pearl Jam song goes. I was like, okay. <laughs> it took me a while to like make a friend that like played an instrument where we would play together, <laughs> which is funny. Um, but um, as far as like, just like being a part of my life, I was like, always, I it always was like the first sound I heard was my father playing guitar to me as a child. Um, but like when I think it's, I think there's like two moments. There's like the fun moment, which is like watching Green Day at Woodstock from home, which I think Jeff also had the same moment and we didn't know each other yet. And we lived like, we ended up living like uh, as kids, like, I don't know, a three minute walk from each other. And we never, we never knew each other until high school because we lived on opposite sides of this highway. So we didn't know each other until we were older, but like we, I think he also both, we both had the same moment of like watching Billy Joe, like getting pelted with mud being like, that's all I want to do with my life. Um, and that was like the fun moment. And I think when I was like 25, I think like I had a chance to go back to college again, to be like a, I don't even know what it was like a cancer laser tech or some nonsense. Mm -hmm. My mom was, my mom was, is a nurse, was a nurse. And she was like, these people make a lot of money. They don't do anything. I was like, okay. Uh, that sounds cool. Um, but then like also at the same time, there was like a bomb tour that was going to Europe. And I was like, I think I want to do that instead. And I think like that moment, I was kind of just like, I think I'm going to fuck up everything else in my life to play music i think i like i'm just gonna like like this is gonna be the priority and like everything else is gonna have to fit around this and that's gonna be how i'm gonna proceed until something else tr changes so i think like when i was like 25 and like there was that bomb tr trip to europe tour to europe and i was like okay this is really what i'm gonna do so it's like no more full-time jobs all freelance everything has to work like this like this is what it's gonna be you know and i think i think that was that moment where i was like this is your this is your gig now <laughs> yeah for sure i don't know if people really realize like being a committed musician like that's something that you have to do like if you want to tour if you want to uh i mean i mean primarily touring right like just having part-time jobs or like freelancing like you're saying just really committing because I don't know how much you can do when you don't commit yeah that, I mean you, know? you you have to be you have like if you really want your band to be a thing that works you really got to commit to it I think you got to be lucky though I'm super lucky that I found a way to make decent money when I'm home that doesn't care that I do this. Like that's super rare, you know? And I, li I live in New York. I don't live in like Nebraska, not to say Nebraska is terrible. It's just like, I assure you, my situation is more expensive than anywhere in Nebraska. So like to be able to live in New York and still do this uh, is, is an amount of luck. It, there's an amount of luck. And, you know, and it took a while for, you know, the, like it, the band, generates an amount of money as well like the band can pay us yeah. um which is you know after a while like you know like we 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 made some money in bomb and stuff like that like but it wasn't like it wasn't offsetting you going to work so like i would go on tour 
and I would lose money. I wouldn't make no money and I wouldn't come home with nothing, but I would, I'd be able to like pay my rent and stuff like that. But like, it wouldn't be like I went to work that month. So like now, you know, and so like that, that's only sub- sustainable for so long before that burns you out too. Right. So like now that the band is actually like just considered another one of my jobs in my mind, it's just like, you know, I have my 1099s from work and I have my 1099s from band world. Um, it makes it even like easier to commit to it because it is, you know, your career and it makes it so, you know, there's just less things like making you being like, dang, like how much longer can I do this? Like I can do this for forever because it's my job, you know? So why not, you know, why not throw everything I can at it? Because, you know, it's, there's no reason not to. So, I mean, but like I said too, that is also very lucky. I know a lot of bands obviously are not in that position, but it took a long time too. So, you know, practice not being practice just like you know patience i guess you know mm-hmm. it just takes it takes a while it took us a really long time to get to that point and i don't think i don't think i saw that being a possibility i was just kind of at the beginning being like let's just you know let's ride this until something else happens and then it's kind of like oh maybe this can just be a thing i just do <laughs> for the rest of my life you know in a way you know in, in some capacity which is great yeah um so to stay on this kind of topic like when uh like or do you have any advice for any bands who want to get to the level that you're at right now with like jeff rodenstock where you can kind of live on live yeah by being in the band or making like money by being in a band oh i think like advice i always give to bands is one um define your roles very early like if you're in a band where all there's five of you and you're all five the people in the band and it's like a mutual situation define that define what you got you all do figure that out if you're in a band where there's like a head person and then four other people make sure that's known Cause I've seen a lot of bands like get, you know, tripped up and they're like, wow, you know, I love this, that, and the other. It's like, well, that person's really in charge. So that's, what's happening. Like you need to recognize that, or you need to change how this works. It looks like, and I feel like that trips up a lot of bands, you know, you know, and, and that, and that can also change as things go along. I feel like with our band, like it started as like an every one. And then it just slowly became more of like a Jeff thing. And, um, And we were all very cool and accepting of that. And that's how we all wanted it to be as well. Um, But as long as you're all rowing together, it's not a problem. I think that that's a big thing because that's just going to solve a lot of problems (laughs) for you (laughs) as you go. You know, you don't want to you don't want anyone to, you know, feel left out or feel like you don't want anyone to be speaking when they shouldn't be, I guess, is one thing. Um, that's 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 big i think um two with the band thing i think a lot of i like a lot of bands make a lot of mistakes with um uh trying to go too big too quick in every way like they try to do a tour too big that just ends up eating them alive it's like maybe you just do a weekend and i see bands like you know throwing mu- throwing their re- you know i was in a band i guess i still am um the bank is a band called the fad that and i'll just say it they foolishly signed a record deal that they didn't need to sign and they're still fighting that deal they're not even a band anymore the guy's still bothering them about stuff and it never needed to happen they never needed to sign a record deal because it, they could have just everything those people could have done that or did they could have done themselves so it's like i think that's a big thing too it's like don't do don't let someone else do the work when you still can do it because you're going to make that money instead and you're going to and then when it's time when you physically can't do the work anymore someone will come along for sure because that means you're doing well someone will come along and they'll offer to do it and they'll make a way better deal than at the beginning so that's what you want you want you know you want to do something until you just can't do it anymore that's when it's time to say oh i need a manager Oh, I need a record label. Oh, I need distribution. I need a tour manager. If you can be, if you, if you have time to do that stuff, do it, you know, like, 
you know, I think I think that's I think that's a huge thing that a lot of bands make a mistake in, and they just end up throwing money away. They end up stuck in these dopey things with idiots following you around for decades over nothing, no amounts of money, you know, and just just added stress. Just get that stress out of there, you know. And I mean, that's good stress to like be your tour manager. That's fun stress, you know. That's that's how you learn how to do it. You know, you should know what you're asking these people to do. I think that the, the a reason that the Jeff band is so successful is that he did so much of that on his own for forever that now when we have other people do it, cause he literally can't, he knows exactly what they're supposed to do. He knows every in and out of it. So he, so we can be very critical of that stuff because we did it for forever, you know? So, and then the last thing I think is, you know, you want to work with people that you trust, it, you know, a lot. So it, it you know, it, it, it might take you a longer time to find these people, but when you do, you know that they're going to do a good job because at the end of the day, you know, and you can see this, uh, you know, online. So like if your booking agent ends up being a shitty person that reflects on you because you picked that person. So, and you know, like that's the last thing you want. If you're, a, if you're doing well, in music and then your booking agent gets into some shit and that gets onto you. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's terrible. You know? So like, that's another thing too. It's like, you know, pick the pe pick people that you trust and like, you know, don't just pick people because like they can help you pick people that you know will speak, like represent you because they, once they come on board, they're on the team. I feel like we always, I feel like in our band, like, you know, our touring crew is the team. Like, the, you know, the, there's no difference between me playing bass and hero taking pictures and Rick doing sound and Christine tour managing and doing merch. But there's no difference between us. We're all, we're all rowing together. You know, none of us are more, you know, more uh, important than the next, honestly. And we all can, we all can uh, hurt each other or push ourselves more forward. I think that's a big thing too, you know, like, you know, that's, I think that's another thing to think about as well. You know, I don't think any of this is fucking rocket science. This is all just yeah. shit, you know, you just have to, you know, do it. <laughs> yeah. None of this is like hard <laughs> to like figure out, you yeah. know? Yeah. I, I think that's excellent advice. I don't, thank you for that. Cause that was really awesome. Um, I, I want to get back to uh, when you were growing up, like when did you, want to start experimenting like with live music um i don't i mean it was it took a while because like when i was growing up my dad played the guitar but he never played with anyone it was never happened um and then i met or i met i'm one of my friends started playing the drums and we would like play together but like none of it made any amount of like sense to play in front of people it wasn't really until um uh it wasn't really until i met this other guy say like chris chris valentino who was like you should he's like i'm starting a ska band you should be in my ska band and that's how i met jeff jeff was the bass player in that band um and i was like i, I was like i don't even know what that word means i was like oh ska is this was early this was like this was like save ferris and real big fish like my boston it was like right with as this was hitting i was like i don't even know what that word is um but then like once i like got in, into that group and like i actually like heard like the seven of us make noise together i was like oh we should do this in front of people this is fun and then i ended up really liking it you know i know some people don't like playing live i really really took to it i was like this is awesome i really love performing and doing it i I think it's really fun and you know it's uh it's something I want to do until I physically can't anymore um but yeah it was probably around high school when I was like oh this is sick this is like definitely a thing I need to have in my life and do um it was weird though because like you know when I was like a kid it was never like I didn't play guitar so I can like be in a band and like play in front of people it was never the idea it was just like I just want to learn how to do this you know, I think I want, I think someone got in the idea is like, you should be a session musician. I was like, that sounds cool. I just play the guitar and make money like in a studio, it, it, the playing live and like in front of people and performing. It just like, I don't know. It just seemed 
just seemed like a weird thing that didn't make a ton of sense. And I was like, that's like more like, you know, I just felt, I felt like you were acting almost like I was like, no, that's not what I do. I play the guitar. Yeah. Um, but uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't until like I like actually met like a bunch of people and like got in a band. I was like, oh yeah, like, this is, this is why we do this. When you joined that band, were you like, in your mind, were you always just like, oh, I'm going to be a guitar player? Did like bass even? Yes. Some- I was always like, I'm going to be a guitar player. It, the, uh, the only reason I started playing bass, um, well, why did I start playing? I think, I think the reason I started playing bass was, I, I think the first time I like really picked it up and was like, oh, this is bass was um, Jeff's bass. Ba- so I was in, we, I was in this band. The band was called Nothing Rhymes with Orange, and Jeff was the bass player. And then Jeff also had a band at that time, the uh, ASOB, the Arrogant Sons of Bitches. And and I was I bothered him nonstop to let me be in that band. He's like, we don't need you. We have all the – there's like 15 of us. And I bothered him a lot about it. So they were playing this party, and their bass player couldn't play. So he's like, you can play bass. And that was like the first time I ever like approached this instrument in any way – and and I don't think I liked it, honestly. I was like, for a while, I fought it for a long time. I fought like playing bass for a long time. The only reason I did it was because that was the person that kept quitting ASOB, or that or like that was the person that was, uh, you know, in any of the other ba- like there was just you just never had a bass player there. Everyone always because a million people play guitar, so like like in a lot of bands in high school, like I would play bass because just no one else wanted to do it, and then that got stuck in my brain so i was like i should learn how to play every instrument i can find (laughs) because then i'll always have a gig um and that really like i don't know and that that started in high school i was like oh if i learn how to play bass i can be in every one of these bands and then that that turned into i want to learn how to play drums too so i can be in every one of these bands too because for a while i played the for the first asob record i played drums um, and then Laura Stevens's band, I play drums sometimes, uh, you know, but, and then, and then, you know, now I'll still play guitar. Like I, I played guitar in warriors for a few tours. Um, I played guitar on the fad, that band I was talking about before they broke up. So, you know, I, f- I feel like, uh, I started as a guitar player, but then it was more important to me to learn, to play as many things as I could, just so I would always have a gig instead of being, I always wanted to like play I always wanted to have the opportunity to play over being super good at the guitar, which worked out good because I don't think I ever would have been super good at the guitar. <laughs> Is there any instruments um, that are kind of just like maybe that you can play that people might not know or that are kind of just like weird instruments? No, no, I, I, no. <laughs> uh, every I play every instrument you can see I can play on stage. Like you okay. see me playing the bells and the and the keyboard. And I'm bad at the keyboard, but like I can do what I have to do yeah, and yeah. the bass and the guitar and the drum, like, you you know, there's nothing else. Like, I, I mean, like if you gave me a saxophone in like an hour, I could, I could like play, you know, Mary had a little lamb. I'm sure. Yeah. Like on, I could do that on anything probably, but like, I feel like once you, once you crack the code on a couple instruments, you kind of just get that. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to like play anything interesting, <laughs> but like I can get, I'll get, I'll get a note out of anything. You know, that's it, but that's it. I can get like a note. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Uh, I see your setup right now. I can see like drums and some orange stuff. Is that, are you in like your jam room? Yeah, I'm in my, I'm in my studio um, in the basement. So this is like where I record stuff or practice. Nice. Um, so were you using like uh were you doing any recording or home recordings like during the pandemic or how are you keeping yourself like musically oh, yeah. active oh yeah i think i did too much right away i like I, I i like freaked out like on the third day i was like i gotta do something to keep busy um and i ended up doing i ended up doing a lot of recordings my friend sean has a band called rocky sullivan's mm-hmm. and he put out like a seven song thing and I played bass on that. I recorded that at home. Uh, that the Inevitables, that ska band, ska punk band with like Vinny from Less Than Jake and uh, Alex from Big D and Obi and a million other people. Matt from the fucking uh, what's that video game ska song that just came at out? 
what is that? Oh, from uh, Fortnite? From Fortnite, Matt Appleton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard that song. I was like, that's definitely Matt playing horns. And then it was. Um, but that 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 was recorded all during quarantine. Um, the Ska Dream record was recorded during quarantine. The Carson Daly thing, not Carson Daly, uh, Seth Meyers thing we did with Jeff was quarantine. That live thing we did, I recorded that in my house because they all live in California. So they just all went to a studio and then I bought a green screen <laughs> and did it in my living room. Um, so I, and, and then I had another thing I was just doing with just random people on the internet where I was just like making bands. Um, <laughs> I probably recorded what, maybe a hundred songs over quarantine, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, a, a lot you'll never hear. A lot of it's not very good, um, but, you know, I did a lot of work over it. I was definitely recording every day. And my home setup is, I wouldn't say it's trash, but it's like, it's as, it's bare freaking bones. Like I had a MacBook from 2009, you know, with a Scarlet and a, and a MXR base DI. It's like plug into the DI, into the Scarlet and the computer. And there it is. And if I was feeling fancy, I'd plug my D112 in and I'd mic my bass amp. But like nothing to it. Like that's how the whole Sky Dream thing was done. And that thing sounds good. They reamped it. J like Jack reamped it on his end at his studio with like real amps and real mics and real shit. Um, but uh, the Seth Meyers thing and the other thing I think was all just like what I gave, what I sent them out of my bass DI. Um a lot of that is just straight up, you know, pretty basic stuff. So like, you know, I think all in $300 and then a computer and the computer is worth $4 probably. I don't even think it's worth any dollars. What is a 2009 laptop worth? I have a better computer now. I got a couple of nicer things as, as the year went on, but like at the beginning when I was recording all that stuff, I was like, this is nothing. Thank God these people know what the hell they're doing with this stuff on the other. Like none of the, it didn't sound bad. It just was like, there's just nothing there. He just needed a lot of help. Yeah. You know, the trip, like the, the, the files were fine. It's just like the, and the performance was whatever <laughs> it was me. So, but like, you know, definitely needed some things. <laughs> um, I saw you tweet about Scott dream that you did in two days. Did you do the whole album in two days? Uh, um, I, did I, um, you're talking about like some, it was an Eric Clapton thing. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, we would, we didn't all do yeah. it in two days. I think I, but I recorded my part when, when I, when it was, so with that, when that record started, Jeff, like, he's like, Hey, it'd be funny if we did this. Right. And then like next week he was like, Hey, we're going to do this. Is that cool? And I was like, yeah, so we all talked about it. And then, and then he, uh, he sent us like the demos and then um, me and him went back and forth. So 99% of what I play in Jeff's band, Jeff wrote, except for this record. Um, so he just, he'll be like, cause it could, and 99% of everything everyone plays Jeff wrote, like Jeff just sends us a song that's done. And he goes, learn this. This is what you do. And like Kevin will do fills and Mike will add his mic stuff onto it. Um, there's not a ton I can add because the bass parts are pretty thought out. Um, but for this, he was kind of just like, you know, he sent us like guitar and like kick and snare. And he was like, write a bass line. So I wrote one and then I sent it to him. And then he sent me back like edits on it. So we like had a co combo bass line. <laughs> um but when it was my turn to record, I think I did it in one day. I think I, I, I was, I practiced it for like a week, but like once Kevin did his final drum takes, they sent them to me. And then the next day I did the whole thing in one day and it took like eight or 10 hours Yeah, and it hurt. It was painful <laughs> after it was done. And like, like, ever, and then like, like, I feel like, you know, over that week, Jeff would be like, Hey, change this to this, change this to this, do this instead. But like the like the ninety percent of it was done in one day, you know. Yeah. But it was just weird because like you know we never had the ability to do that ever because we yeah. whenever we record we always go to Jack's, Jack Shirley, in Oakland, um, and we all stand in a circle and we just play. <laughs> we uh, you know we don't we don't go one one at a time. We all play together, and then like you know, 
if overdubs need to happen, they will. But like, you know, we just record all at the same time. So like the fact that like I could send him a bass part and then he could say like, hey, change this one thing was just like never a thing we would even be able to do. Or just the fact that I could sit there and like look at this bass line and be like, do I want to try and do this better? And just like sit there and obsess about it, which is bad for me because I would. Um, the nice thing about Jax is like it's done. It's like, there it is. You know, it's like, I remember, I remember the first time we recorded with him. Uh, we did it the same way, but we've always done it that way. All live, right to the tape machine. Um, we were, we recorded the song and he's like, all right. And he gave us all, uh, he gave the four of us some uh, pen and paper because Dan wasn't uh, in the band yet. And he's like, all right, this is the clock on the tape machine. When you, if you hear a mistake, write it down and we'll, uh, we'll punch you in and you can fix it. And he started playing and I was like, Hey, stop, stop. He's like, what? And I was like, you have to solo our instruments or my instrument at least. So I can tell if I made a mistake. And he was like, if you can't hear it when everyone's playing, it's not a mistake. And I was just like, it literally changed my life. I was like, Holy fuck. You're right. <laughs> so this was the opposite of that. Cause I, cause I, all I hear is me. And I was just like, Oh, did I play that note? perfectly and i'll sit there and do that shit like nope could be better could be better is the worst <laughs> I, I i genuinely did not like enjoy that part of like that's not that's not true that's the wrong way to say it i when we were done i texted everyone i was like you know take this as you will i appreciate how we record our records so much more now after doing one not that way and i think we'd all say that i think everyone would be like it was cool we did this and it was fun but it really showed us how much we like the way we do it yeah that live recordings are so fun um yeah. what what a uh, bass did you use for your recording uh this one <laughs> uh it's it's like a frankenstein fender um nice. it's a p base body with a j base <laughs> neck and then these are quarter pounder pickups and this is that badass bridge so the only part of this base that's original is the wood <laughs> is the body um oh and that's the base i play live too almost like that's the base that uh the sorry thanks um uh, or thanks sorry whatever the hell it's called the yellow one <laughs> Uh, that's that bass on that record. That's the, if you, if you see us play, that's almost surely the bass I'll be playing because it's, I don't think, uh, there's, what is it? What, like a, it's like a Swiss army knife. It just sounds yeah. good for everything. I think there are bases that sound better for certain stuff, mm -hmm. but that bass never will sound bad. Yeah. And it's also really light and I'm old <laughs> and I like to hold the bass up like this <laughs> sometimes and a heavy bass will not uh, help with that. I have like a, like a 1978 grabber mm -hmm. that I, I was, I had, uh, I had thoughts of like, I'm going to bring this on tour too. And I played it the first time. I was like, what the fuck? This thing weighs more than I do. My Rick is really heavy too. Um, I just got a Yamaha bass, which is cool. They just sent me a bass, which was sick. Um, <laughs> And that that I'll probably bring on tour too, um, when we do our tour. But as a backup, yeah, for sure. I gotta, I gotta change a couple things on it, but it's a pretty cool bass that they sent me. I was I was uh, pretty stoked when they were like, "Hey, you just want this?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, please, <laughs> please." And I, you know, they're actually they're actually super nice over there. They they help me out with some acoustic guitars and electric guitar. They're and uh, they're they're real good people. And they sent me a bunch of software, like Ampeg shit. Cause they're the same people. So oh, that's they're, 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 they're really, uh, they, they, they've really, they've helped make my recording setup get out of, um, uh, <laughs> you know, 1998, <laughs> yeah. I'm like now in this century, I feel like at least with my stuff, what, uh, what recording equipment do you use or like, um, dog Reaper, 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 cool. Reaper free baby. Yeah. Um, I have logic mm -hmm. and I, I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, I think it, I think uh, if I'm just recording something, I'm going to use Reaper every time because it's super easy to edit in and like punch and stuff. If I'm like mixing something or if I'm like making a thing, which I'll do, you know, here or there, 
Yeah. I'll probably record it in Reaper and then dump it all into Logic because Logic, one, it's just nicer to look at, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it just has a little nicer stuff. Like it just like, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about recording. I feel like Logic uh, accepts that of me and like says like, oh, this is the thing that makes the tape, you know, sound. I was like, oh, cool, tape sound, oh, push. <laughs> Reaper is just like, you know, the ugliest thing in the world. Like it, you need to know what these things do to use them. But, you know, I, I don't need to do that when I'm just like recording my baseline and sending it off to whoever in the world. Yeah. Um, so they both, and, and if I have anything with keyboards, I'll always use Logic just because Reaper has no keyboard situation. Yeah. Um, but so I use them both. I'd say I use, I, it's probably like an 80 20. I use Reaper 80% of the time and Logic 20% of the time. Nice. Um, so what, I know your tour is starting soon. We saw uh, some dates coming through. When, um, what else do you have planned for the rest of the year into 2022? uh just ugh, just that that's gonna that's gonna be a bear we have to learn <laughs> 35 new songs you know yeah. we have so we have to meet up before that which means i have to go on an airplane and fly across across the land to yeah. and we have to practice we you know usually usually at worst we have one new record to learn you know mm -hmm. and it's not to say you know when i say learn it's like we know how the songs go but it's one thing it's one thing to record them as a, because you know obviously you know when the four of us are done doing whatever jeff can now run around in the circle and now he can play the bells and now he can play the keyboard and now he can play the saxophone and now he can sing his seven part harmonies you know now we have to figure out how do, how do the five of us do that how do the five of us do that with the instruments we have in front of us which is a lot you know we all have a keyboard or a synthesizer so even the drum, so the drum, Kevin has a drum pad and like I have a synthesizer and Jeff has a sampler and Mike has a sampler and Dan has two keyboards and a saxophone. And I've so we have a lot of things, yeah. you know, we, we don't want to ever play to a track. We want to see like, we want to, cause for whatever it doesn't, I'm not, and I'm not throwing shade at a band that does that, mm -hmm. that plays to a click to a track. That's cool. That's just not what we want to do. Yeah world's different everyone's different all different people um so we just have to figure out how can we get as close to this as possible with the five of us so that like when i say learn that's what i mean like how do we do that um no dream i don't think is going to be super hard to do um i don't think there's a lot happening on that record besides what the five of us are immediately doing dan always has a tough job i feel bad for dan but dan is like the most positive outlook in the world nothing's gonna bother him so if anyone was built like dan was built in a lab to deal with stuff like that like um our old <laughs> keyboard player uh, and trombone player matt from bomb music industry who i love it's his birthday today actually um he was not built in a lab to do that he used to get very annoyed <laughs> and he'd have to like play the guitar and then play the trombone and then play the keyboard like and I know I get it. It's like it's frustrating. Like it's not. It's like not like when you like say like, hey, I'm gonna be in this band. Like you usually don't sign up for like some sort of like obstacle course, which is I kind of feel like what Dan and Matt did. Um, but uh, Sky Dream will be a little harder because there's yeah. a lot more. So I don't. I don't. But we'll have more help. You know, like uh, Jeremy Hunter is gonna play with us, and I don't know who else. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I just didn't ask. I kind of just want to be surprised. <laughs> I know Jeff must know. Yeah. But a lot of the time, I just don't even ask. I'm like, I don't know, someone will be there. It'll be cool, <laughs> whatever. You know, I know, I know, uh, uh, Scott Tune Network will be there, which is tight because, yeah. um, I've never actually played with them before, I've just seen them play. So I'm excited to share a stage with them. That'll be fun. Um, yeah. but yeah, so that's going to take a long time to do. Like, usually when we book a tour, we'll go to the first city and like spend three days practicing. We're going to have to do some way bigger than that for this. <laughs> So like, you know, there might be like weeks of practice. And besides that, you know, so anything rest, and that'll take us the rest of the year, you know. Yeah. Jeff's really busy with his cartoon, which he was just nominated for an Emmy today. Yeah. Which is super crazy. Um, so you know, there's not a lot of extra more time with that. I know um uh me personally, um, mm -hmm. I think some more inevitable stuff is coming out, which is cool. Um they asked me to like record stuff and then it doesn't come out for months. So I forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, they, like that last single, uh, Heavy Heads that came out, I was like, did I record on that? 
like I had to like listen to it. I was like, oh, that's that that sounds like me. Okay, and then I like went on my computer. I'm like, oh, that's me. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like it just comes out so far far from when I did it that I don't even remember doing it. Um, and then that other band, that Rocky Sullivan's band, I'm in with like just a bunch of friends from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean, it's he's he's doing like a twelve song like Irish punk ska record so that uh, yeah. he's, that's starting to like i think i'm i just recorded one song for it yesterday i'll do another one this week i think and like as it as it goes it should be out by the end of this year maybe i don't know okay. he's busy too like he's like a full-on dad and a doctor oh. or trying to become a doctor <laughs> yeah. so he's not he, there's you know those are the kind of bands i really like because like there's zero um uh zero touring yeah like just zero commitment just like record the stuff like that was the, that was the sell on the inevitables like when Vinny texted me because i've known Vinny for forever mm-hmm. um because uh we became friends when bomb opened up for lesson jake and we were so stupid <laughs> they were like you are our new friends uh, so we all stayed in touch um and uh Vinny texts me. He's like, "Hey, I got this new band. Um, I, I need a bass player. I think you'd be perfect." I was like, "Uh, I don't." Know. He's like, "The band will never tour." I was like, "Yeah, man, that's me. That's me." Because I just never know when Jeff wants to tour. It's and he and I don't think he knows honestly. Yeah. You know, it's so like it's so random when it happens. So it's 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 really hard for me to commit to a full time band besides this band. Like, you know, I was, you know, I, I definitely could have been the guitar player in Warriors, I feel like, if I could have just given them any sort of commitment, I just couldn't, you know, I was like, yeah. I, I love doing this and I'll do it as much as I can. But like, I have no idea when he's going to tell me we got to go somewhere. I just don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know what I was talking about, but that's <laughs> what's going on. That's my year. Yeah, that, uh, man, that's so like responsible, you know, to not want to join something with that with knowing that you could possibly leave at any time which is such a hard thing to do especially if you like playing and yeah jamming, jamming with your friends yeah it is i mean you know like i feel like you i feel like you it's at some point you just have to be in a band you can only really be in one unless you're the person in mm-hmm. like jeff can be in 50 bands because he makes the decision about this bit. You know, he, Jeff can be in one more band, I'll say, because he makes the decisions about this band. Um, uh, and he, but he'd also have to be in charge of that band too, which is why <laughs> Antarctica Vespucci works really well because Antarctica can't tour without Jeff anyway. So, you know, <laughs> so like that, so he's, he's, he's figured it out. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, he takes me on every, um, I play in all those bands too. So it's not like I only play with one person. I feel like that's a good point too. I feel like, if I only played in Jeff's band, I might get bummed out, but I feel like not only do I play in every one of his bands often, like I play in AV, play in the Bruce Lee band. Um, uh, whenever a band gets taken on tour with Jeff, half the time I play in that band too. It's like when I played in Warriors when they got taken on tour with Jeff, I played with Laura when they got taken on tour with Jeff. I played in, Ch- I didn't even know Chumped. Jeff and Jeff said, John will be your bass player. They called me up and were like, oh, I heard you're going to play bass. I was like, I don't know anything about that. And they're like, yeah, Je- Jeff said, you'll just do it. I was like, I guess I will. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was awesome. I love Chumps and I be, and I ended up becoming really good friends with them. But like, so I get to play in a lot of bands um, still, you know, like, but only for like a little bit. Yeah. So I still get that like, um you know playing with other people i still get to fill that part of my soul <laughs> um you know without being in all these other bands as well you know and having to like really juggle a schedule but you know i think i think it's important i think it would only re- it only really works because i have that one person that i'm one band that i'm like pro that i promised myself to yeah how, how do you feel about doing a double duty on gigs it depends. Um, it's like when I see a band, I'm always like, I'd rather just be playing in that band. So like, there's always that part of brands. Like I just would rather be up there. Um, like I, when we're on tour the whole time, but the only, the only time it's like, as you get older, you start to realize like, Oh, wait a second. You know, I'm uh Oh, I can't eat dinner tonight. <laughs> and I can't eat dinner for 30 nights. Cause dinner is when the band, mm-hmm. the first band's playing. So that part kind of sucks. Um, but I'll still, 
almost always do that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll just eat earlier. I'll just we'll eat at, you know, midnight or whatever. I, I genuinely love it. I gen, you know, I'll, I want to play as much as I can. When we did some like holiday shows a couple of years ago and I play the, the show was like, however, oh, three, four hours long. I didn't play two songs of the entire show. I played every set with Chris Farron. I played every song Chris Farron. I played every song with Laura, except the two she did by herself. And then I played the whole Jeff set. Played in every band. It was, you know, and I mean, like Laura was on stage a lot too. Kevin was on stage a lot too. Like we were all on stage a lot, but like uh, there were two songs I did not play <laughs> on, the, on those, in those four shows. We did four shows in Philly, New York, Connecticut, somewhere else. Oh, in Long Island. And I, they were, or, Bro or somewhere else in Brooklyn. And I didn't play two songs. Damn. the entire time and i loved it i thought it was awesome and it, was, it was like it was stressful and it was crazy but it was like i mean i'd rather do that than not do that you know i've always done that though i've always feel like i was always like in a lot of bands as a kid and like i would play a show and i was always playing two sets in one at one show or like i would go play a show and then and then i would get in a car and i would drive to another show that i was playing I've just, yeah. I just feel like I've always done that. And I, I don't know. I, I like it. I, I, it's, it's stupid. I shouldn't like it because <laughs> it's dumb, but it's, uh, it's fun. I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, man. It's totally fun. We joke in San Antonio because there's like four, maybe like five ska bands here, but it's pretty much the same lineup. So everyone, every time there's a ska show, there's multiple people doing like double duty that night. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I feel like ska. 100 percent does that like i feel like if i wasn't playing in mostly ska bands as a kid that wouldn't have happened i feel like you know if you were in a metal band i feel like you guys are like you know not gangs but like you know like <laughs> like baseball teams you know like you're yeah. like you're like oh, i'm gonna play you you know you know i i you know i don't know i, I feel like you know as as a me I, I feel like that like a lot of the genres of music i'm usually in um or more like of a whole team vibe instead of like a band versus band versus band thing so yeah. i feel like it lends itself to that right it's like so I'll, of course i'll play in your band when i'll play in your band too because we're all you know <laughs> we all want you know we're all we're all on the same team yeah for sure for sure so uh where can people listen to uh any of your bands uh every jeff thing is on quote unquote records every single thing for free which is always a conf confuses people i work with They're like so all your music's for free online like, yes like, how do you make any money so, you know everything's free on google you know <laughs> like just type it in and google will come up you know if i can watch the yankees for free on tv you know or on, on the internet you can certainly find like you know the taylor swift single for free on google if you spend 10 seconds um, so that band's there. Um, I feel like everything I'm in is on Spotify, right? The Inevitables are on Spotify. That new song just came out. Rocky Sullivan's are on Spotify. Um, oh, I, I record some stuff for this guy, Jimmy Doyle. He's got a new record coming out. I didn't play on that record, but other stuff he does, uh, I recorded. Um, he's got all this stuff on Spotify too. And Bandcamp, everything's on Bandcamp. Bandcamp's great, right? We all love Bandcamp. Yeah. Go to Bandcamp maybe instead of Spotify, um, you know, uh, or just live your life. I don't know. Um, yeah, everything I've ever, you know, is on Bandcamp more or less. Um, I feel like on my Twitter too, I have like a little link tree that I, I think I have everything that I record on in there that if you want to just like do like a John through the years, you can kind of find everything I've done or like what I'm doing or who I'm involved with right now. Like Laura and the and Warriors and like other bands like that aren't on there, I don't think, because I'm not playing with them anymore. Mm -hmm. But you know, you still listen to them. They're still yeah. very good. <laughs> <laughs> Get their stuff too. I know Laura has a new record coming out and it's gonna be super good. I've heard it. It's super good. Awesome. Well, uh, John, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm stoked to see you when you come through. And uh, yeah, man, I just hope you have a good day. Well, thanks. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much again. I appreciate All right. it. All right. Peace. Later.